Hey boss babes, welcome to another entrepreneur vlog. This is episode two, the Q&A edition. I asked you guys over on my Instagram at Rosebeer Cosmetics to submit some questions for a Q&A. I'm actually going to do that Q&A during this entrepreneur vlog so that we can talk about it during the premiere. We can chat in the comments. And if you guys have any other questions you want to ask while we're watching this video, you guys can comment them below and I will film another part to this Q&A. The first question that I got was, would you consider bringing back the Slay the Renee group chat? I miss you guys. And the answer to that question is absolutely, girl. I absolutely want to bring back the group chat for boss babes and other entrepreneurs so that we can connect help each other in any kind of way and just have like a network of girls that you can talk to that will understand the different types of issues you may have want to celebrate the successes that you go through and things like that so yes the group chat will be back up and running shortly i just have to work out a few things and make sure that it's going to operate the way that i intend for it to so you guys can look out for the slate of renee group chat to be back up soon How do you deal with burnout and all the pressure of having a business? This is a really good question, you guys, and I'm going to give you like the most honest and realistic answer that I possibly can. Um, the best advice that I can give you is to take time out for you. You have to understand that being an entrepreneur, you're already wearing so many different hats and doing so many different tasks. It's going to be hard to find time to actually focus on yourself while doing all of these different things to run a full business. So I would recommend to maybe switch up your routine some days. Maybe you want to start your morning routine a little bit differently than you did yesterday so that you give yourself like a fresh new start. It doesn't feel so mundane or so repetitive and you have to like do things to add some fun in there. And my daughter and I sometimes, and we would do our skincare routine together. She would come in the bathroom with me, she would do her face, I would do my face, we would talk about our mornings, and then we'd go downstairs and we prepare a nice breakfast together, we eat, talk, and I'd get like some laughs in with her, you know, spend some quality time before I started doing my work. I always try to do something mindful that will like get me in the, you know, get me inspired, get me motivated to work, and what better motivation for myself than spending time with my child? This is exactly why I'm an entrepreneur. Spending quality time with her before I start my work day is something that really helped me. Um, also, you have to know that you can take regular breaks. You don't realize how many employees who work a nine to five job or uh, you know, a day job, they are actually given time off. They work and they earn personal time off. But as entrepreneur, for some reason, we don't think that we deserve time off. We feel like we have to work ourselves into the ground. And that's just not the case. Burnout is something that can cause you to completely like either fail yourself or fail in your business if you don't take it seriously. So another recommendation is to try to control your thinking. Try not to think too far into the future. Clearly, we are always thinking about think the next thing on our to-do list to do. And we're always trying to plan ahead so that we can manifest growth. And that's great. Continue to do that all the time. But don't think but so far ahead into the future. Try to make your goals a little bit more attainable, a little bit more reachable so that once you accomplish them, you feel good about it. It doesn't seem so out of reach or impossible to get there or it's going to take me a year to get to this financial goal, this six figure mark that I want to make. Try to control the way that you think about your future and make sure that it's centered around growth in general, not how much you can grow and how much time, just growth, period. So that's my most realistic advice I can give, honestly. Having somebody that you can talk to, like we mentioned with the Boss Babe group chat, having other like minds and like individuals who share the same experiences is also something that I really, really, really enjoy about the work that I do. It's like getting to talk to you guys. Y'all give me a boost. Y'all make me feel like, sure, I'm doing all these different things, but I'm helping people while I'm doing it. So it's like an inspiration, motivational kind of thing for me. So hope that answers your question. Do you receive a ton of orders one day, then not so many the next? Do you get discouraged? Yes. The answer to your question is yes to both of these questions. I will sometimes receive orders in a boatload. I will receive 10 to 15, maybe even 20 orders a day, depending on how heavily I promote it and how consistent I was promoting this product or this service that it is that I'm offering on my website. Your 
order volume or the amount of orders that you're going to receive is always going to depend on you. So those moments where I'm getting zero orders or I'm getting maybe one or two orders a day, I always have to tell myself, it's not the customers. There's nothing you can blame. You know, you can't say, well, I just didn't get a lot of sales this day. I always change my frame of thinking to what didn't I do today to try to get an extra two or three sales today? What could I have done to try and gain another sale or two today? You know what I mean? It's it's not, oh, I didn't get a sale today. It's I didn't do something that could have gotten me to a sale or could have had me receive an order today. So it's very easy to get discouraged. But one thing I'm learning in this entrepreneur journey is that you have to change the way that you think. You have to shift your focus into always being positive because the more negative thoughts that you think, the more negativity is going to transpire and spill over into the energy that you put into your business. So if you're discouraged and you're feeling like, well, I didn't get a sale today, so I'm just, you know, I'm not in the mood to really work tomorrow. I'm probably not going to do much to work or I'm not going to do anything tomorrow because I didn't get a sale today. Then you're manifesting negativity and downfalls into your business. But if you think I didn't get a sale today, but tomorrow I know that I didn't post three times on Instagram. I didn't really interact with my followers and I didn't do anything promotional for my business. I didn't advertise new, any products. I didn't try to run a Facebook ad. You know, I didn't maybe share a couple of different stories. I didn't go a lot. There's always something that you can be doing to get a sale. So if you're not making any sales, don't say, I'm not saying blame yourself. I'm saying think what else could I be doing or what other resources could I be looking for to help motivate me or to help me boost my sales in my website. So getting discouraged is one thing, but getting discouraged and not putting an action behind it is another thing. Best way to gain passive income as an entrepreneur. I love this question. I have such a good response to this question. Thank you to my sister for asking. I'm going to share some things with you guys that I've learned along the way. So what is passive income? Passive income is basically money that you earn that doesn't require a lot of action up front. It's that expression, earn money while you sleep or I make money while I'm sleeping type of thing. My recommendation to earn passive income as an entrepreneur is to, one, monetize your social media accounts. So, for example, YouTube. YouTube is something that I consider passive income. While it does require a lot more work, there's ways that you can do it that it doesn't require a lot of work, if that makes sense. Um, also, Instagram, you can monetize your posting on Instagram or do sponsored posts. There's another way that you can earn passive income, which is all digital services and digital products. I have several digital products in my store. I highly recommend anybody who has physical products to also have digital products. If you have a significant amount of information about a subject, you can either run like an online course or you could create an ebook or, you know, some type of journal or a planner or something like that. That is something that you create one time and continue to earn money from it without actively doing something to earn the money from it. So if you're not making passive income as an entrepreneur, what are you doing? Because who really wants to be putting in 30 hours a day when we only got 24? You know what I mean? You make that product one time, you continue to make money from it. And it's not going to lose its valuability, especially if you update it frequently. Um, so that's my recommendation. You may be wanting to try like drop shipping or opening like a print on demand store, but passive income, digital services and digital products. How have you been? And I'm glad to see you back, boo. Hey girl, hey, thank you so much. First of all, thank you for asking me this. I've actually been doing very well and that's kind of like a really standard answer. I'm gonna try to give y'all like a little bit more of an in-depth response, but the fact that you asked and took the time to put that in this question box, knowing that I was asking about you asking me a question, like I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. But how have I been doing? Honestly, the best answer that I can give y'all is that I am blessed. And I just feel like, if anything, the universe is for sure working in my favor. And I am learning to accept things that I don't necessarily understand. I'm just kind of going with the flow. And the flow is carrying me into good places. And that's all I can say is I'm blessed. I feel like life is, you know, life has always been a little bit tricky for me, but I'm able to make the best of every situation and I'm able to come out of whatever dark pit I put myself into or life puts me in. I'm able to come out of it stronger. I've learned something from it and I just feel honestly like empowered, like being back in my workspace, being back into the mindset of, you know, helping people and doing things that make me productive is honestly helping me to just become overall a more healthy mind and a more healthy person. So thank you for asking. 
Would you share or help with the formula? Yes, I will. If you guys have any specific formulations that you guys need me to try or you'd like some assistance with the formula, all you have to do is comment below on any of my videos and I'll see your comment, take note of it, and I'll try to get a video out or at least try to give you some pointers on how you can improve your formula. I won't say that I'm an expert at any type of formulation. I'll give all those props to Tara Lee and Yaya DIY Creations. If you guys haven't followed or subscribed to their channels, highly recommend checking them out because those girls give me the ideas and the formulation um, information that I use in my products. So I'll definitely help in any way that I can, but I won't say that I'm an expert. So. Just because you are a humble synergy that will be infinitely blessed. Thank you so much. This is my girl right here, y'all. She gives me so much inspiration, promotion, just like positive energy all the time. Every time she comes into my DMs, comments on a post, I absolutely love, 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 love this girl. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. As always, your kindness does not go unnoticed. And I hope that I am able to share how much I appreciate it by giving back to you in any way that I can. Like I'd be telling y'all before, I'm a firm believer in vibration that you give off is what is going to bounce back onto you. So the energy that I'm trying to give off is positive, encouraging, team effort. We all win. If I win, y'all winning. And I feel like that genuinely is what gives me like so much power, I want to say. And I'm not trying to like put myself on any high horse. I'm like she say, I'm very humble, very, very humble. But I feel like the power that I get is by giving the power to people. I want people to feel that power that they give to me and I try to give it right back as fast as I can. I just love doing for people and I love that you guys are receptive to it and y'all like give me so many positive comments. I absolutely love it. This is just, see this Q&A is really giving me the vibes right now. Like I love it. Thank you. How do you not under slash overprice your items on your site versus what I spent on inventory to make? This is a really good question once again. And like I said, some of these questions I feel like are like all of us need to know. And I'm just now getting the hang of this myself because like I said, it's a good question, but it's something that is difficult to actually understand if you're not if you're not being taught the proper formulas and things like that. But there's an actual formula that I found out that you need to calculate the base price of all of your products. And I'm gonna put the formula on the screen. It is base price is equal to the ingredients plus the packaging, plus the listing fees, times the transaction fees. Now, this is, like I said, something that I can talk about in an entire video. If you guys want me to talk more about this, I can, but in a nutshell, what you wanna do is calculate the base price of your products and then give yourself an hourly pay and make sure that you know what your profit margin you want to be. So, for example, if I'm selling a product that my base price is $2, but I want my profit margin to be 80%, that means I'm going to multiply the base price of my product times five, I believe. So whatever that number is, it's going to be the actual price of the product that can make me a profit. Sorry if that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If you guys need a detailed video on this, just comment down below. But this is a really good question. I'm glad that you asked. What are the steps to register LLC? Is it name register, EIN, then LLC? This is such a really good question. I'm so glad that you asked this question because I've actually been thinking about doing a separate video entirely on registering your business legally in your state. But the actual order of things that you should do when you are starting your business is you should first choose a business structure, whether you want to be a sole proprietorship, an LLC, an S Corp or a C Corp, whatever your business structure is, you want to decide that first. Then you want to go ahead and register with the IRS and make sure that you apply for that business structure. After you've registered your name, then you will go and apply for an EIN number. So you want to get your business structure, then name register, and then get your EIN number. I'll do a separate video on this comment below if you guys want to see that video. This is a really good question. I just can't spend too much time in this video talking about it, but all these things are very important. And if you haven't done any research on them, I highly recommend doing the research on them for your state. In the beginning, getting everything started up, did it take a lot of money? The answer is yes, it did take a lot of money. Um, when I started my business, we were at like the beginning or the early stages of COVID. So actually what happened was for me, I received like a stimulus package and I was able to use that stimulus package to fund the startup of my business. And I spent most, mostly the entire stimulus package. It was about six hundred dollars. And um, that's what I spent to invest in my business. Now you don't exactly have to spend that much. You can start a business today 
with only $100. If you have only $100, you can start a business. It's all up to how you plan, strategize how you're going to start your business. Do you have an actual marketing plan? Do you know what products you're going to be making and how you're going to encourage your customers to want to shop? Have you started a logo, a website? Do you have a place to sell them? What about your social media profiles? Are you active online already? There's tons of things that you can do to actually start a successful business with just $100. Um, the money should never hinder you from start. Go ahead and start. If you have a couple dollars in your pocket, you can start a business. Um, but to answer your question, yes, it did take a lot of money, but it doesn't necessarily have to. That was just my particular situation. Tips for rebranding. I absolutely love this question, you guys. I'm in the middle of rebranding my business myself. As you guys know, Rosebeer Cosmetics has just rebranded and relaunched. So I love that you asked this question because I have a lot of good input that I can add in this question. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is why rebrand your business? Like, why, what is a rebrand and why are you rebranding? There's a couple of different reasons why people normally rebrand their business. The first one being you want a new look. You want to differentiate your business from somebody else's or you want to you know, kind of give yourself a little bit of edge over your competitors. Maybe somebody thinks your business is similar to somebody else's and you don't really like that. Um, you want to re-engage with your customers. Even if your business is already doing well, there's different ways that you can re-engage with your customers and connect with your audience. So maybe that's the reason. Or, or you have a new message that you want to convey to your customers, which is the case for me. I have a new message and a new mission statement behind my business. I, it doesn't only just get a new look, it gets a new mission a new target audience, you have a new marketing strategy, everything. So my first tip is to set an actual purpose for your rebrand. What is the purpose for your rebrand? What exactly are you trying to get out of rebranding your business? Are you looking to attract new customers? Are you looking to, you know, gain different clientele? Are you looking to, like I said, differentiate yourself from your competitors? Or maybe you just want to, maybe you yourself just want a new look for your business. Whatever the reason is, understand that reason and have that as the focal point of your rebrand the second tip that i have is to make sure that your business has a mission that it is trying to accomplish with this rebrand so for myself my rebrand's mission is to switch my intention on making skincare from being skincare to help boss babes who are you know not practicing as much self-care to not only expecting the boss babes to practice self-care i want all women at first, I was targeting just specific entrepreneurs, but now I want to target every woman, every female, every goddess that feels like they need to awaken their divine femininity. So as you can see, like my business is mission shifted from one target audience to the other. And I knew that. And that's something that I clearly defined. And with that, I was able to go in and tweak some things in my business. The third tip that I have is to make sure that your customers are aware that you're rebranding. Make sure that your customers know that your business is changing and why it's changing so that anybody who wants to follow along with you in your rebrand will. And those who do not will have the option to not. You don't want to just throw something out there and then have potential people be like, well, I didn't understand why you're doing this or what happened to X, Y, and Z product and stuff like that. Like you want your customers to be informed and updated on what it is that, you know, you're doing with your business because that's who you're targeting. Those that's the people that you're talking to. So talk to them and make sure that it's known have an actual plan for when your rebrand is going to start how are you going to roll out new products and how are you going to switch your website stuff like that and really the last tip that i have is to just be creative and be as free as you can be because with doing a rebrand you basically are giving yourself like a fresh start you're giving yourself a blank slate so anything that didn't work before with the last way that you branded your business try to just start completely over and do something completely different maybe come up with a different you know color scheme or like i said think of a different target audience and things like that you you have an opportunity to start over start fresh and try something new so that you're able to you know scale your business in a way so keep all that in mind when you're rebranding don't just think that changing some fonts a logo and some colors is actually a rebrand because it's not that's not a rebrand that's you're updating your theme basically so that's my advice on rebranding. That's kind of what I'm working on. So I hope that answered your question. How do I get authorization slash link set up pay options, PayPal, etc. to my big cartel? This is a really good question. Unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with the big cartel. I've only made one big cartel storefront. That was for slaytherenewway.com, but I did look it up really quick on Google and I'll include a screenshot 
of the instructions that they gave so that you can set up PayPal and integrate PayPal to your Bitcartel. It doesn't seem like it's too difficult, but if you guys need videos for different website companies, Wix, Shopify, Bitcartel, anything, just comment down below. I love building websites, so I'm very open to sharing what I do know about building websites here on this channel. So just go ahead and comment down below. But this question was from a subscriber after I posted my last launch day video. If you guys haven't watched that video, make sure you go ahead and check that out. It's a really good one. I'm sure that you guys will love to see the behind the scenes of me preparing for my business. But her question by Charlene says, how much realistically do I need to start a skincare business? And I feel like this is a really loaded question. Like I can go on and on and on talking about this, but to answer your question in short, I'm going to say, to try not to think about how much do I need to start a skincare business because realistically you can start a skincare business with just one product you don't really need to have you know five or six or seven products I recommend personally to have about five products but you don't necessarily need that um, what you do need is to determine what kind of products you want to offer and why it's best if you go down and write a list of the potential products that you want to offer in your skincare business and then through that list decide which of those products your customer needs the most because you're selling a product that you want to sell but also the most important piece is what does your customer need or what is it that this product that you're trying to sell does your customer you know do they expect something of it is there something that they're getting out of it what is the intention behind your product so i try to say don't think how much do i need think what do my customers need the most if that whether that's a product or a service or whatever it is Try to think more about your customer. Do they need, you know, skincare products for like dry skin? Do you see a lot of your audience talking about having, you know, hyperpigmentation or, you know, maybe people want to have like glowing body oils or something like that. Whatever it is that your customer needs based on your business model, go based on that to start. And once you're starting, then your customers will be able to give you feedback. You know, they'll request different products that they like, or they'll give you inspiration behind making a new product after that. But to start always 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 focus on the customer's need and how to integrate that with their business model